If you're going to the store to buy a better filter and you're trying to figure out which one's the better filter, just hold on, don't buy a filter yet. And now, the Information for Customer Success Show. All right, so I'm gonna commend you on the fact you're trying to get a better air filter for the house. That's great. You care about your air, you care about your HVAC system. However, you don't know what you don't know. What's the big deal, Chris? A filter is a filter. I'm gonna spend the extra money. I'm gonna get one that says it's fantastic and it captures allergens and things of that sort. What could be the problem? All right, so let's back up for a second and discuss why are you even getting a filter for your system? Well, first and foremost, every HVAC system, any system that moves air, so this doesn't include things like boilers, needs a filter to protect itself. Otherwise, that dirt and debris would just clog up the uh, uh, equipment and uh, basically ruin it, and you'd have a heck of a time trying to clean it too because that would be very, very difficult to do. So we put air filters to protect the equipment. So the filter catches dust, catches dander, hair, debris, all kinds of stuff flying up in the air that you probably don't even know about and you can't see with your naked eye. A dirty or wrong filter can restrict airflow, overwork the blower motor, freeze coils, damage the compressor. And what do I mean by all this stuff? The main job of a filter is to capture all that dirt and debris on the filter and not allow it to go through the AC unit. Well, what happens is that as your filter catches all this dirt and debris, it becomes more restrictive, which means it passes less air through it. Now, the main job of your HVAC system, whether it's cooling or heating, is to pass air through it. And there's going to be a certain point in time where if you're not passing enough air for your cooling or your heating, you're gonna have a problem. I'm sure every customer here has experienced an issue where the problem with your cooling or heating system was the fact that your filter was totally clogged. And all it took was your HVAC technician to come over, pull that filter out, probably ask you, hey, when was the last time you changed this? And put a new filter in and that solved the problem. But there are all kinds of different filters. You know, some you can see through, some you can see sort of through, and some that are so opaque, you don't know if there's light on the other side. So you can see by just looking at different filters that they have different permeability. There's probably a different restrictive nature to them for air passing through those filters. We use this system in the industry to rate filters, to tell you how good a filter is at doing its job. And this is also gonna lead into what kind of filter do you need? What kind of filter can you have in your house? MERV, M-E-R-V, Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value. It goes from a scale basically like one to 20. So your basic filters are MERV one through four. Basic fiberglass filter, catches only big debris, not great for protection, very, very minimal. MERV five through eight, is what uh, probably are the most common pleated filters. When I say pleated, it's these zigzag looking type material on the filter. It's not just a straight fiberglass filter. Uh, and they're kind of an okay balance point between protecting uh, the equipment and allowing enough airflow to go through. Then you have MERV 9 through 13. Those are high efficiency, great filtration, but may restrict airflow if your system isn't designed for it. And this is exactly what I wanna talk about, is that if you're going from one of these MERV 1 through 5 filters, let's just say, and you're trying to get a MERV 13, most likely you're going to create a problem. Um, of course, it goes beyond MERV 13 as well. MERV 14 through 20, probably not relevant in the residential market, but it's uh, those kind of filters do, uh, do exist and they're used in places like hospitals and clean rooms. One of the first things that I would try to discover is that what kind of filter do you have in there currently that's been working for you, right? If you figure out that you've had a MERV 2 filter in there uh, and you're going out and you're going to buy another MERV 2 filter, no problem, all right? Then I have no comment. You're doing okay, right, as far as the air conditioning system is concerned. Now, are you cleaning the air in your house? Uh, no, you're probably not cleaning the air as well. So there's room for improvement for you to get a better filter, but can your system handle it? So if you are trying to make that move into a better filter, I would say anything MERV 8 and up is going to be a pretty good filter. So don't, don't focus too much about getting, oh, I got a MERV 13, I got a MERV 11. There's, there's nuances to this whole thing. But um, most customers with existing duct systems can probably make their way up to MERV 8. I say most because, of course, there's lots of factors to this. One of the biggest things you have to consider is a thing called static pressure. Think of static pressure like blood pressure. Too high and the system suffers. 
high MERV filters increase resistance. If your blower is in size for it, and if your ductwork is in size for it, airflow will drop. Well, it results in hot cold spots, frozen coils, blower burnouts. This is the important one. New modern blowers are very sensitive to this stuff. And of course, on the furnace side, you've got cracked heat exchangers, uh, which is very dangerous. And those could all be caused by a simple thing like a filter. So what I'm going to show you guys now is exactly how these static pressure readings uh, are taken and what they mean for our filter scenario. So you here you see a little tabs in here, the red ones, and also one up there as well. You see these on your system, that means your technician was doing his proper job. He was taking static pressure readings. Now what we care about in our scenario here is going to be a pressure reading before the filter. This is our filter right here. This is our filter, right? And a pressure reading after our filter. And it's gonna tell us exactly how much pressure drop our filter had. And I'm gonna show you exactly two different filter scenarios and what happens when you put a better filter on the system. Right here we have our probes put in and we have our filter. And the filter we have in place right here is a MERV 11 filter. It's actually an excellent filter, right? And in most scenarios you can get away with this filter. It's probably your max filter in most retrofit scenarios. So let's see what this filter does for us exactly. Oops. We're going to put it back in. and. We're going to test our pressure differential between this point and that point to show us how much static pressure drop that filter has. And we've been running tests for a while now and we are about 0.08 inches of water column. So the other filter we want to compare it to is a MERV 16. Pretty aggressive, right? You went out, you want to have healthier air, you want to protect your equipment a little bit more, you went and bought one of the best filters you can buy. Great, wonderful, let's see if it works in your system. now. You can see the difference in these filters, right? About the surface area and number of pleats. So we're gonna do this filter in here, in this system. Oh, stick it in this way. And we're gonna figure out how it affects our static pressure. I already hear the noise difference that it makes. So once we put our door on and we are sealed tight, we're gonna run this for a couple of seconds and we're going to do the pressure differential and of course you would expect a MERV 16 filter and a lot more pressure drop than a MERV 11 and let's look at it it's actually 0.12 so we went from 0.08 to 0.12 pretty significant but the question really is is this filter good enough for my system will this work and right now I showed you there's a difference between filters, and of course there is, that you put in, but was this system designed to handle this filter? So I'm gonna to get to that in a second. With this new MERV 16 filter, we are measuring our total static pressure for the entire system. And here's what we get. We get 0.53. So I thought you said, Chris, that 0.5 is the maximum static pressure of most systems. Absolutely. If you have a standard system, 0.53 is over. It's over that limit, so it would be no good. Right? So that's not a good filter to put in. This is an example of how this filter takes the whole system out of whack. Bad things about what would happen here. So number one, you get less airflow, right? Less performance, perhaps. Number two, you have a possibility of the coil freezing up. Number three is a long-term uh, effect of what, what this is, and it's probably your blower motor. So most manufacturers, pretty much all now, will have what's called an EC motor. And that EC motor, will ramp up as it feels resistance because it's trying to get airflow happening here, right? So this unit actually got noisier. I am not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it got a little bit noisier. This motor ramped up. So your motor could ramp up to the point where it's ramping up, ramping up, ramping up, and it's basically burning itself out. It will shorten its lifespan, it will die. It doesn't usually happen overnight. It might take several months, it might take a couple of years, but that's the bad effect of, of, um, of uh, increasing your static pressure. Now, our system here was actually designed for this filter. This is the filter that's meant to go in here. Why? Well, this is a system that actually has some adjustments on the airflow and it can actually go to 0.8 inches of, of uh, water column in terms of the static pressure and that's what the settings are set for this unit. Um, we also designed a duct system that is large. There's no, it's not choked, it's not constricted. This return drop you see right here is oversized. It's actually meant to handle this. This filter could be a lot smaller actually if we weren't so aggressive with our uh, filter MERV rate. If we were trying to put in a MERV 8, this duct could be way smaller. But we actually decided to make it big because we know we want to make 
good filtration on the system. So this is how you do it. Your system has to be designed for this in order to make it happen. And there's really only one way to find out. It's to do the math, to figure out whether or not your system can handle a better filter. I always tell my customers, you wouldn't want to wear three masks and run a marathon. Well, your system doesn't want that either. So be kind to it. Hey, sorry to interrupt. I know the discussion is fascinating, but if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe and share it to somebody who thinks it might be useful. So I would truly appreciate it and will keep me going doing these sort of topics and hopefully I'm helping you guys out. So if you had a system professionally installed at some point in time and it's a brand new installation, somebody did brand new ductwork for you and they gave you a MERV 11, MERV 13, amazing, beautiful, stick with like for like filters. If you've got a MERV 11, I think you're pretty good. MERV 13 is sometimes pretty ambitious. You can go higher. Listen, you can go extremely high MERV rating as long as your HVAC company designed the whole ductwork system for it. And if you have that, that's fine. My conversation here is going to be steered more to people that have existing systems, especially with older homes and older ductwork, and you're trying to improve your indoor air, and you're trying to get that better filter. Well, we have plenty of incidences and plenty of stories I can tell you about when customers buy the wrong filter. And it's not always about the MERV rating. So the most common filter you will see that uh, you probably have in your house is a one-inch filter whether it goes somewhere in a slot by the unit or it goes into your filter return grill. A one inch filter has a certain surface area because it's only one inch thick. So a MERV 11 one inch filter may not have the same resistance qualities as a MERV 11 four inch filters. So big difference between having a media filter, a media cabinet door with one of those four or five inch thick filters versus having a one inch filter. So if you have a one inch filter, you have to be especially careful because the resistance values in a one inch filter will be a lot greater than it is on a four inch filter. And it's a simple surface area thing. The actual surface area of let's just say a 20 by 21 inch filters is 20 inches by 20 inches, right? That's the surface area. Well, if you take a 20 by 24 inch filter, well, and you stretch it out, you're gonna get in most filters about 300% of that surface area. So it's not 20 by 20, it's really 20 by 20 by three. So you have a lot more surface area for air to pass through. So your resistance is naturally going to be lower. And the resist resistance level in terms of the static pressure drop, that's what it's called, is listed on most filters. And it's something that probably means absolutely nothing to you guys uh, when you look at it because these numbers are sort of arbitrary and you guys can't make a decision, but your HVAC technician will definitely recommend to you what kind of filter you can have with what resistance. And this is all done by taking static pressure readings. A quick synopsis of the whole filter conversation. If you have to stick with a one inch filter because it's, you have no space, it's just the way the system was designed. You have a filter return grill or you have a slot right by the actual piece of equipment that you could slide your filter in, you're sticking with a one inch filter. Um, now, there's different kinds of filters besides just paper filters, too, that, that may help you out, uh, get a better filter, but it's still about static pressure. If you have a media cabinet filter, well, same conversation, but you have a little bit more flexibility on getting a better filter. So if you're building a place from scratch and you're getting a brand new duct system, HVAC system, then I would definitely ask your HVAC contractor to put a media cabinet filter in versus some one inch filter. If you're replacing your AC, Ask your HVAC contractor, can I put a media cabinet filter in? Hopefully there's enough room, there's enough duct, there's enough space to make one happen. Uh, a lot of times I would love to put them in everywhere, you just don't have the space. The unit is in a closet and there's absolutely no space to put a media cabinet filter in. We stick with a one inch filter, however, I recommend what's called a PMAC, a polarized media air cleaner, which basically has about the rating of a MERV 13 without that static pressure drop. So there's ways to get around it uh, in terms of getting a filter that's good, but a media cabinet filter that, that, that handles a four or five inch filter is your best choice for filtration. We spent a little bit of time talking about what kind of filter is the best filter, but actually there's a lot more to this. And this is something that, again, you probably want to re inquire when you get your system replaced or if you're buying a brand new system. It's just the best practices of the actual filter placement because location matters. Now, Best practice, install a filter right before the unit, as close to the equipment as possible. But even beyond that, if you have a vertical duct drop, 
in a horizontal position is your best location for a filter versus a vertical position. One of the reasons is a very simple reason. It's, it's really gravity. You have a filter in this horizontal position, everything that falls on it will just stay on that filter. If you have a vertical, you have a vertical filter now, imagine this is your vertical filter. Now you've got dirt and debris captured on the sides of it. And yes, most of it settles pretty well, especially on the, on the pleads uh, that are, you know, in the horizontal position, but then there's going to be definitely some clinging of the dirt and debris that doesn't quite adhere perfectly. And as soon as your HVAC system fan turns off, a lot of that dirt and debris will just fall right next to the filter. And you'll notice that in a lot of horizontal, I'm sorry, vertical filter applications, you actually see dirt and debris on the uh, lower level of the duct right before the filter. One of my pet peeves, which clients hate me for this one, is the filter return grill. The grill that's at the ceiling or at the return of the wall, and it's very convenient for you. You don't have to go in the attic to change your filter. You don't have to go in the basement. It's right there, you open up the door, it's nice, and listen, I understand why they exist. However, they're usually too small, they get dirty fast, you see a lot of dirt on the actual grill too, which is unsightly, and they increase static pressure tremendously. So that's just a few reasons. The other reason is more of a duct reason. And a duct reason for not being a fan of filter return grills is that simply you have filtration happening right at the point of the wall or the point of the ceiling. Now, air gets in, in that grill, it gets filtered out, and now clean air is technically above that filter. Um, but let's talk about your duct system. I don't know many duct systems that are perfectly sealed. And now your return duct is going from that grill somewhere in the attic into your, into your unit. And not, not being perfectly sealed, you've got a lot of pinholes and connection points and everywhere else where your unit is actually sucking in air that doesn't go through a filter. And when I see um, systems like that, I usually see the signs of it. Dirty blower wheels, dirty coils. You, even though somebody got the most perfect filter in the filter return grill, you see those things happening anyway, and that's because your unit is sucking up dirty attic air that's not being filtered at all. And obviously nobody wants to be breathing dirty attic air, but also it's coming in unfiltered because your filter grill is all the way back in the house and you've got 20, 30 feet of return duct. The takeaways from this is don't buy any high efficiency filter unless you really know that it works. You have to have your static pressure tested by an HVAC technician. In closing, don't let the wrong filter damage your HVAC system. If you're unsure what to use, reach out to a pro. I'd rather help you choose the right filter now than replace your blower motor later. And as I said before, one of the most sensitive things right now to static pressure is going to be your EC motor. Those are the common uh, computerized motors that pretty much every modern system now has. They're great, they're efficient, they do a lot of wonderful things. Unfortunately, they are sensitive to static pressure and if your static pressure in your system is too high, it will burn the motor out. So think about what filter you're putting in your house.